I think it's touching almost every industry. And if employees don't adapt, they're probably going to be left behind. I mean, this future, this revolution is moving at such a rapid pace. And there was so much emphasis on NVIDIA's earnings report and what that was going to be. And like we've been talking about, it exceeded expectations. And the CEO of NVIDIA, he said that essentially the whole world would have fallen apart if the earnings report wasn't good. Do you think it's fair that there's that much emphasis on their earnings report and that this is almost a signpost as to how people should feel about AI? Well, the way I look at it is, and this is something I wrote about in, in my book, Brain Rush, uh, actually, NVIDIA was the company uh, that made me think this is a, a fantastic opportunity. This is like the dot-com era. You know, I, I wrote three books about the dot-com era, and I saw um, NVIDIA's earnings report in May of 2023, and they had this huge uh, growth forecast after a drop in, re in revenue in, in not a very good quarter, but the forecast was so good that the stock started to go up. And as soon as I saw that, I, I said, I know ChatGPT was just introduced about four or five months ago. This is telling me that this is real. And so essentially there are two companies that are sort of, if you think of, if you ever, you know, this time of year, there are um, these geese that are flying south. So you see these Vs up in the sky. And the, and the geese at the very front um, of the generative AI migration uh, are um, basically um, NVIDIA and OpenAI. You know, those are the two leaders of this whole thing. And only one of them is public. So, you know, that puts a lot of weight on, um, on NVIDIA and on Jensen Huang, who is absolutely, in my mind, one of the, the greatest leaders of all time. I mean, he is just amazing because he started this company and he keeps inventing new growth curves, um, new ways that the company can grow. So the company comes out with these new chips, like the, the black, uh, what is it called? The Blackwell chip, that's it. I don't know why they call it Blackwell. Blackwell chip, um, like last year, they were sort of struggling with getting the, the, the kinks out. Now it's going really, really well. And they're coming up with new versions of this chip, more powerful versions of this chip to maintain their 90% market share. Uh, the demand is, is still extremely strong. Uh, they're, they're able to execute and uh, they're, you know, basically their, their current business and invest in new growth curves. And to me, that is the way that you maintain uh, high expectations beating revenue growth. And the, the rate of growth that this company has achieved for a company of this scale, I don't think it's ever happened uh, in, in business history that a company this size has been able to keep growing so fast. And that is a testament to uh, Jensen Wong. So he's a, he's a you know, the, a lot of the world is dependent on him. And he is someone who has waved away the talk and the chatter of the AI bubble. And I know that you think that we're nowhere near it popping. So specifically today, what are you looking out for next? Well, I mean, I think the thing that I find really interesting is at this uh, Cerebral Valley AI conference that I went to, um, there were a lot of companies that I had never heard of before that were now worth, you know, in the you know, nine, 10, even hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in private market value with hundreds of, or tens or hundreds or 200 or 300 million dollars in annual recurring revenue, significant companies that I didn't even know about. Um, and they're generating revenue because they are using AI to solve real business problems. And for the most part, they're in, very specific market segments or very specific industries. For example, there was this one company that I saw, which I was particularly impressed with called Harvey, which is probably named after Harvey on Suits. I don't know if you ever saw that uh, show Suits before. But anyway, um, basically it's, it's, a, it's a firm that um, has uses AI to help lawyers um, do their corporate uh, legal work much more efficiently. Um, things like mergers, due dil merger due diligence, uh, and, and other activities that are very, um, you know, document intensive. Uh, and, and there's all these specific rules in different uh, places in the world and you're doing a global M&A. And basically they're able to combine legal expertise in sort of the mergers and securities area with a uh, chat GPT. Uh, it was founded by a, a, law, a lawyer and basically it's doing amazing, uh, amazing business. It has 800 customers, 100 million in annual recurring revenue, the valuation is something like $9 billion. And there are companies that are 
like that uh, in different industry segments that I that I saw there. So I think this is sort of the future is figuring out how to use this technology to create real value for businesses um, and get people to pay you for it. Um, and so I think it's becoming, I'm, I'm beginning to see the glimmer of the answer to the question of what is the killer app um, for uh, generative AI. And if that happens, it extends the boom, I think. And as we get closer to that answer, I hope you can come back on, break it down with me and talk all about it. I mean, this landscape is ever changing and there's so much to discuss. So I hope we have plenty of conversations in our future. Peter Cohen, thanks for the time. You're welcome back anytime. Well, thanks for the invitation. I will take you up on it.